Good morning. We welcome you to St. Joseph's Episcopal Church, the Church on the Way, with open arms and open hearts. Please be reverent while we worship. We encourage you to fully participate in our service with responses and with song. Please use the chat to add your prayers, thanksgivings, and petitions so that we may include them in the service. Thank you. Good morning and welcome to St. Joseph's Episcopal Church. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. The voice of the people today is Hyacinth Hudson.
grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, open our lips. And our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Come, let us adore him. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and raise a loud shout to him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great king above all gods. In his hand are the caverns of the earth and the heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee and kneel before the Lord our maker, for he is our God. We are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Oh, that today you would hearken to his voice. Psalm 34, verses 1 to 8. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall ever be in my mouth. I will, I will glory in the Lord. Let the humble hear and rejoice. Proclaim with me the greatness of the Lord. Let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord when he answered me and delivered me out of all my terror. Look upon him and be radiant, and let not your faces be ashamed. I called in my affliction, and the Lord heard me, and saved me from all my troubles. The angel of the Lord encompassed me, those who fear him, and he will deliver them. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Happy are they who trust in him. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Good morning, Church. A reading from the first book of Kings, chapter 19, verses 4 to 8. Elijah went a day's journey into the wilderness and came and sat down under a solitary broom tree. He asked that he might die. It is enough. Now, O oh Lord, take away my life, for I am no better than my ancestors. Then he lay down under the broom tree and fell asleep. Suddenly, an angel touched him and said to him, Get up and eat. He looked. And there at his head was a cake bread on hot stones and a jar of water. He ate and drank and lay down again. The angel of the Lord came a second time, touched him and said, Get up and eat, otherwise the journey will be too much for you. He got up and ate and drank. Then he went in the strength of that, of that food 40 days and 40 nights to Horeb, the Mount of God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. You are God, we praise you. You are the Lord, we acclaim you. You are the eternal Father, all creation worships you. To you all angels, all the powers of heaven. Cherubim and seraphim sing in endless praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. The glorious company of apostles praise you. The noble fellowship of prophets praise you. The white-robed army of martyrs praise you. Throughout the world, the holy church acclaims you. Father of majesty and bounded, your true and only son, worthy of all worship, and the Holy Spirit, advocate and guide. You, Christ, are the King of glory, the eternal Son of the Father. 
when you became man to set us free. You did not shun the virgin's womb. You overcame the sting of death and opened the kingdom of heaven to all believers. You are seated at God's right hand in glory. We believe that you will come and be our judge. Come then, Lord, and help your people, bought with the price of your own blood, and bring us with your saints the glory everlasting. Good morning, St. Joseph. A reading from Paul's letters to the Ephesians, chapter 4, verses 25 to chapter 5, verses 2. Putting away falsehood, let, us, let all of us speak the truth to our neighbors, for we are members of one of one another. Be angry, but do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your anger and do not make room for the devils. Thieves must give up stealing. Rather, let them labor and work honestly with their own hands so as to have something to share with the needy. Let no evil talk come out of your mouth, but only what is useful for building up as there is need, so that your word may be give with so that your words may give grace to those who hear and do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God, with which you were marked as a steel of the day of redemption. Put away from you all bitterness and wrath and anger and wendling and slander, together with malice and be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another as God in Christ has given you. Therefore, be imitator of God as beloved children and live in, in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I am the bread of life. You who come to me shall not hunger. And who believe in me shall not thirst. No one can come to me unless the Father beckons. And I will raise you up. And I will raise you my flesh for the life of the world and if you eat of this bread you shall live forever you shall live forever and I will
The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Jesus said, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. Then the Jews began to complain about him because he said, I am the bread that came down from heaven. They were saying, Is not this Jesus, the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know? Say, I have come down from heaven. Jesus answered them, Do not complain among yourselves. No one can come to me unless drawn by the Father who sent me. I will raise that person up on the last day. It is written in the prophets, and they shall all be taught by God. Everyone who has heard and learned from the Father comes to me. Not that anyone has seen the Father except the one who is from God. He has seen the Father. Very truly I tell you, whoever believes has eternal life. I am the bread of life. Your ancestors ate the manna in the wilderness, and they died. This is the bread that came down from heaven, so that one may eat of it and not die. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats of this bread will live forever, and the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. The Gospel of the Lord. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Our preacher today is our seminarian, Romy John Abraham, and he will be speaking Jesus the bread from heaven. Let us pray. Speak, O Lord, as we come to you, to receive the food of your holy word. Take your truth, plant it deep in us. Shape and fashion us in your likeness, that the light of Jesus Christ might be seen today. In our acts of love and our deeds of faith, speak, O Lord, and fulfill in us all your purposes for your glory O triune god and all the people of god answered amen good morning this is a great morning and i want to open with a joke there was a priest who was walking down the street a priest who was walking down the street as he was walking he saw a young boy trying to reach the doorbell of a house. A little boy was trying to reach the doorbell of a house, but he couldn't get it as he was, as he was a little short. The priest identified this and walked closer so that he could help this little boy. The priest walked over, smiled, and pressed the doorbell 
for this little boy. Now the priest looked at this little boy. He asked, what next? The little boy smiled and answered, now we run. Yes, now we run. Kids are always mischievous, praise God. Greetings, the beloved community of St. Joseph, the church on the way. It is joy to gather here on this blessed Sunday as we come together in worship and fellowship. Today is August 11, 2024, the 12th Sunday after Pentecost. As we journey through the liturgical calendar and lectionary, this morning, I am honored to share a message that resonates deeply with our faith. Jesus, the bread from heaven. Jesus, the bread from heaven. Amen. May our hearts and minds be open as we dwell into the spiritual nourishment that only Christ can provide. Bread. Bread has been an integral part of human diet for thousands of years. Of years, symbolizing sustenance, nourishment, and life. It's a basic food that has been essential in many cultures, often representing the staple that sustains physical needs, physical life. Bread is often called universal. Bread is universal, simply yet profound in its ability to sustain life, making it powerful symbol in both daily and religious context. Jesus, the bread from heaven title is drawn from Jesus' own words in the Gospel of St. John, chapter 6, commencing from the sixth verse, and it continues 4 to 41 to 51 as well. St. John chapter 6, verse 35th. And Jesus said unto them, I am the bread of life. He that cometh to me shall never hunger, and he that believeth on me shall never thirst. Jesus, in this, in this gospel, in his own words, reveals a deep and essential aspect of our faith. Just as bread sustains physical life, Jesus, the bread from heaven, offers spiritual sustenance that nourishes our souls and gives us eternal life. There are few songs which talk about Jesus as bread from heaven. First, One Bread, One Body by John Foley. The hymn focuses on the unity of Christ through one bread, which is Jesus, the bread from heaven. Second, Break Thou the Bread of Life by Mary A. Lanbury. This hymn is a prayer for Jesus, the living bread, to nourish believers through his holy word and presence. Third, Guide me, O thou great Redeemer, O Jehovah. This hymn includes the bread of heaven, feed me till I want no more praise, which symbolizes Jesus as the sustenance that satisfies all spiritual hunger. Fourth, and one of our favorites, let us break bread together. African American spiritual. This hymn is more about the act of communion. It reflects the significance of bread symbolizing Jesus as central to act of worship and unity among believers. Jesus in this gospel boldly claims bread from heaven. This is a metaphor not only highlighting his divine origin but emphasizes his role in spiritual lives. Today we dwell into four aspects of this profound statement. Jesus as integral satisfaction, Jesus 
divine origin and authority, the necessity of spiritual hunger, and gift of resurrection. First, Jesus as the source of integral satisfaction. Jesus declared, I am the bread of life. This is one of his I am sayings. Whoever comes to me will never hunger, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. So no hunger and no thirst if you come to Jesus, who is the bread of life. Jesus promises that people will never experience, never experience hunger or thirst. The word that crucial is in here is never. The Greek word for never is omi, like my name Romi, which emphasizes absolute certainty. Saint Augustine said, you have made us for yourself, O Lord, and our hearts are restless until they rest in you. This quote emphasizes the idea the true satisfaction and fulfillment are only found in God, echoing the sentiment in St. John's Gospel, which we just read. This promise also echoes with Psalm 107, verse 9, for he satisfies the thirsty and fills the hungry with good things. Jesus offers satisfaction that transcends you and me, our physical needs, addressing the deepest spiritual longings. Now, how to apply this as fellow believers? We fellow believers can find true contentment in Jesus who can meet all our needs. We are called to seek satisfaction in Christ rather than the temporary worldly pleasures which this world can offer and which bring no glory to the God the divine. The second, Jesus' divine origin and authority. At this, the Jews were beginning to grumble about him because he said, I am the bread that came down from heaven. They said, is this not Jesus, the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know? How can he say, I came down from heaven? The Jews questioned Jesus' claim because they were familiar with his earthly family, Joseph and Mary, failing to recognize his divine origin. The Greek word from grumble is gogizo, which indicates murmuring or complaining, often in disbelief or discontent. A. Tozer said, Christ is not one of many ways to approach God, nor is the best of several ways. He is the only way. Amen. This quote emphasizes the unique divine nature of Jesus, affirming his authority as the only way to God, which aligns with the claim coming down from heaven. The passage highlights mystery of incarnation, where Jesus, fully divine, took human flesh, like we are in the human flesh, as mentioned in John chapter 1, verse 14. His divine origin and authority is crucial to understand his role as a mediator of God and humanity. Jesus who is fully divine and fully human and yet he has authority. The application as fellow believers is to recognize Jesus which encourages us to trust in his words and teachings which he offers. It challenges us to look beyond our limited perceptions and embrace the fullness of his divine nature. Third, the necessity of spiritual hunger. We all require spiritual hunger. As written in John chapter 6, 44 verse, no one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draws them, and I will raise them up at the last day. We sang this hymn last uh, Sunday, and I will raise them up. 
So this is aligned with this passage. Coming to Jesus requires a response to Father's drawing, signifying the need for spiritual awakening and hunger. The Greek word for draw is elkio, meaning to attract or pull towards. The famous Martin Luther King Jr., a famous theologian, a social activist, said, God is able to transform the jangling discords of our souls into beautiful symphony of brotherhood. He will draw us closer to himself, not by force, but by irresistible power of his love. Amen. This quote emphasizes the transformation, the transformation which we need through God's love, which draws people to him, aligning with the idea of John 6, 44, that no one can come to me, me as Jesus, unless drawn by the Father. As we apply this, we must cultivate a spiritual hunger and openness to God's call, seeking deeper communion with Jesus. Our role as fellow believers is to respond to God's drawing with faith and desire to be filled by him. Fourth, the gift of resurrection. John 6, 51 says, I am the, I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats this bread will never, will live forever. This bread is my flesh and I will give for the life of the world. Jesus offers his flesh, his own flesh, his own body, symbolizing his sacrificing uh, the role he has for us, the death and resurrection. And as he means eternal life here, the word, the Greek word for life is zoe, referring to both physical and eternal. The famous Pandita Ramabai, an Indian theologian and philosopher said, Christ, the eternal truth, has taken upon himself the suffering of humanity. Christ, the eternal truth, has taken up on himself the suffering of humanity to offer us a life that conquers death and bring us eternal communion with God. This quote captures essence of Jesus' sacrifice for the life of the world, as described in this gospel, emphasizing the gift of eternal life through Jesus' flesh. This promise also connects us with John chapter 11, verse 25. Jesus declares himself the resurrection and the life. As becoming Eucharist, which is also known as communion, it symbolizes this great gift, reminding us as believers of Jesus, sacrifice and promise of resurrection which Jesus claimed. I am the resurrection and the life. And how to apply this as fellow believers? We as believers have to understand the sacrifice of Jesus and the promise of resurrection which brings hope and assurance to this eternal life. Partaking in communion is a reminder to us and is of profound truth and our union with Christ. So as I conclude, Jesus, who came from heaven, the bread from heaven, offering eternal satisfaction, revealing his divine authority, inviting us to spiritual hunger, and promising his resurrection. I am the resurrection and the life. As we reflect on these spiritual truths, let us commit to finding our satisfaction in Christ, acknowledging his divine origin, responding to God's call, 
and living in the hope of eternal life. May we always draw near to Jesus, bread from heaven, who sustain us now and forever. And all the people of God answered, Amen. Amen. Well, thank you, Romy John. As you know, Romy is our uh, also our alternate organist. Um, today he will also preach at the eleven o'clock, but uh, beginning September, he will be in another church assigned by the horse. By his his is finishing his master in divinity, and the Union Theological Seminary where he is studying included as part of his training a kind of internship in a church in Manhattan which is uh, uh, recommended by his seminary not not by a not in accordance with his being uh, at at our church uh, so uh, we will miss him for quite some time and when he finished that internship then he returns to to us so in the meantime, we'll pray for an alternate organist. Uh, I've been searching and uh, waiting also for Nigel to recommend to us a new name for our organist at the 11 o'clock. Let us now affirm our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God. The Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, I believe in Jesus Christ. God's only Son, O Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered on the Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Give us your mercy, O Lord. And grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world. For only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care. And guide us in the way of justice and the truth. Let your way be known upon earth. Your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten. Nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Pray in us, clean hearts, O God and sustain us with your Holy Spirit. Let your way be known upon earth. Grant to us, Lord, we pray, the Spirit to think and do always those things that are right, that we who cannot exist without you may by you be enabled to live according to your will. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Mighty God, hear our prayer for our parish family of St. Joseph's Episcopal Church.
of Queens Village, New York. Strengthen the faithful, revive the inactive, restore the penitent, inspire us for mission, and grant our vision of a building. Grant to us all things necessary for our common life, provide for our ministries, and bring us the unity of heart and mind through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Lord God, almighty and everlasting Father, you have brought us in safety to this new day. Preserve us with your mighty power that we may not fall into sin nor be overcome by adversity. And in all we do, direct us to the fulfilling of your purpose through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Brothers and sisters, forgive one another as God in Christ has forgiven you. With purified hearts, let us offer ourselves to God in prayer, saying, Bread of life, we are hungry for you. O oh Lord, you have sealed us by the Holy Spirit and marked us as Christ's own forever. May we live in love with each other as Christ loves us. Bread of life. We are hungry for you. O oh Lord, we weep with David over the cost of war, the lives lost and destroyed. We pray for peace and an end to all violence. Bread of life. We are hungry for you. O oh Lord, with you there is plenteous redemption. Restore and recreate the world in which we live and bless us to live at peace with all things. Bread of life. We are hungry for you. O oh Lord, we give you thanks for all police officers, especially those who serve our city. Give them grace to labor and work honestly to uphold justice with mercy. Bread of life. We are hungry for you. O oh Lord, let your ears consider well the voices of the needy. For the sick and hurting and all those who call to you from the depths, we now pray. Bread of life. We are hungry for you. O oh Lord, you are the bread of life. We thank you for offering your own flesh for the life of the world. Keep us and all those who have died in eternal life. Bread of life. We are hungry for you. Holy and merciful God, open your ears to our call. Listen to the cries of our hearts. Accept our prayers and answer them according to your good and perfect will. In the name of Jesus, the Lord of glory, we pray. Amen. Well, we pray for those celebrating birthdays and anniversaries and ask God to bless them. The Adams family gives thanks and praise to the Almighty in thanksgiving for Christiana Adams, who celebrates her birthday on August 13th with this message. Blessings upon Christiana. We wish her God's continued miracles, grace, and favor. May his light shine upon her and God's blessings on all of her future endeavors. From her parents, Roxanne and Oren, Sister Cerise, and Isaac and Isaiah. Tabitha Parrington gives thanks and praise to the Almighty in thanksgiving for her aunt, Sharon Parrington Robinson, who celebrated her birthday last week. May God continue to bless her for many more years to come. O oh God, our times are in your hand. Look with favor, we pray on your servants as they begin another year. Grant that they may grow in wisdom and grace and strengthen their trust in your goodness and love all the days of their life 
through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Pray for those uh, who are celebrating their anniversary. Most gracious God, look with favor upon your servants as they celebrate their wedding anniversary. By the power of your Holy Spirit, pour out the abundance of your grace and blessing, that they may continue to cherish each other and continue to grow in love and peace through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. For those who are traveling, Heavenly Father, whose glory fills the whole creation, and whose presence we find everywhere. Preserve those who travel. Surround them with your loving care. Protect them from any danger and bring them in safety to their journey's end through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. We continue to pray for the people of the world affected by natural disasters and catastrophes caused by climate change. We especially pray for the victims of Tropical Storm Debbie, especially in Florida and the Carolinas. We pray for a permanent ceasefire in Gaza and occupied Palestine. We pray for the souls of the massacred, for the hungry and thirsty, for the homeless and the imprisoned. We pray for the nations of the world that they may now, that they may denounce apartheid. We pray also for the riots in the UK and we pray for the safety of people of color in Britain. We pray for the ongoing war in the Ukraine, the genocides in Palestine, Palestine, Sudan, and the Democratic Republic of Congo. And we pray for the protests going on throughout the world. We pray for our political leaders here in the United States, that we might have safe and fair elections. We also pray for activists protesting injustice and fighting for liberation. God, you made us in your own image and redeemed us through Jesus, your son. Look with compassion on the whole human family. Take away the arrogance and hatred which infect our hearts. Break down the walls that separate us. Unite us in bonds of love and work through our struggle and confusion to accomplish your purposes on earth that in your own good time, all nations and races may serve you in harmony around your heavenly throne, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. We pray for the family of Virginia Alexander, who passed away last Monday, August 5th, at age 104. Our prayers go especially to her daughter, Teresa, and to all of her bereaved family. May Virginia's soul and the souls of the faithful departed rest in peace and rise in glory. And Tabitha Parrington asks that we pray for her co-worker Jerome Avenue on the passing of his brother, Raheem Avenue, who was laid to rest last week. May his soul rest in peace and rise in glory and his memory be a blessing to all who knew him. And we ask that God comfort Jerome and his family at this time. And St. Joseph's prays for our church leadership, for Father Fred, Robert, Sandra, Roxanne, Coretta, Justin, Harold, Edlin, Reginald, Laverne, Olivia, Jennifer, Angela, Nicola, and Jeffrey, as they continue to meet with the bishop and his team to secure a path forward for our new church building. And St. Joseph's continues to pray for all those who have died May their souls rest in peace and rise in glory. We also pray for those who are grieving the loss of a loved one, that they find comfort in the Almighty. And at this time, we ask that you include the following people and families in your daily prayers. Afua, Agatha, Allison, Anne, Anthony, Audi, Audley, Audrey, Avril, Azaque, Barbara, Beverly, Cesarine, Chandra, Charles, Christopher, Clarence, Claudette, Crystal, Daniela, Daphne A, Daphne P, David, Deborah, Desiree, Desmond G, Desmond S, Doreen, Dorothy, Dossie, Ida, Edgar, Idris, Edson, 
Eric, Eulalie, Fitzroy, Freddie, George, Greta, Gwendolyn, Harold, Heather, Hyacinth, Ivy, James, Janelle, John E., John L., Jonathan, Joy, Juline, Justice, Kathleen, Keisha, Larry, Layton, Leonard, Lois, Marcia, Maria, Marilyn, Marina, Marlon, Marcia, Mary, Maureen, Melissa, Michael, Michelle, Natalie, Nicola, Nisha, Noel J, Noel K, Norma J, Norma M, Orinthia, Marilyn, Pat W, Pat C, Peggy, Peter, Rosa, Rosalind M, Rosalind S, Rose, Rosemary, Rupert, Ruth, Sade, Sheila, Shelley, Sonia, Sister Sheila, Verily, the Willisie and Maxfield family, and Yolanda E. You may now speak aloud the names of those for whom you would like to pray. Myrna and Eugene Clark. Angela Vergara, she's sick with bronchitis. And Percival Jones. Irene Griffin. Dignan. Adley Carey. Ida. Catherine Smith, known as Kitty. Pray for all of them. Christine Corrigan. Let us pray for the healing of all those whom we mentioned and also those who are in our hearts. God of all power and wisdom, by the might of your command, drive away from our bodies all sickness and all infirmity. Run to your servants your healing touch so that their weaknesses may vanish and their strength renewed through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you.
invitation to support our ministry. When you are blessed by our ministry, we invite you to donate. To support us, please visit our website at www.sentjosephqv.org slash donate or scan this QR code by opening the camera on your cell phone, scanning this image and, and clicking on the yellow link that pops up. Or you may send payment also via Zill to treasurer at stjosephqv.org. Thank you so much. God bless you forever. Let us pray. Creator God, you made the heavens and the earth and all that is in them. You bless us with abundant abiding love so that we may be inspired to live generously. From your plentiful gifts, we give you our own first fruits, the gathering of our time, talent, and treasure. May they be a blessing to the world. Amen. The general thanksgiving. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life. But above all, for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts, we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen.
Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Heir of salvation, purchased of God. Born of his spirit, washed in his blood. This is my story. This is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. This is Praise. 